Hiya, it's Jake from JKM Guitars and I'm just about to get this guitar body boxed up. I thought I'd show you what the inside's like and kind of what makes my guitars, my guitars and the little features I have, um, which you might not find in too many other sorts of models and makers and that sort of So, start with the soundboard. So, the bracing is a little different to what the standard kind of Gibson and Taylor the Martin would be doing. Um, where they would have the standard X, which is very common in a lot of steel string guitars to help reinforce the soundboard. Um, but instead of having a few lateral struts across this direction, um, I've kind of amalgamated the X brace of the steel string and then the fan fret style bracing of classical guitars um, and I mash them together to get this sort of style. I've been doing it for geez, nearly every guitar I've made myself actually now. So. Um, these five braces behind the, behind the bridge plate here fan out from behind the bridge plate and overlap lightly as well. Um, so the idea of this is to really help prevent, um, on older guitars you can see they're bellied up, where after time the, the bridge pulls forward and collapses in this area and lifts in this area. So hopefully um, in 100 years time all my guitars should still be looking brand new um, because this extra reinforcement behind the bridge here. Um, it also fans out um, symmetrically, so then uh, the idea is to try and get all the notes to project and sound as clear as one another from the bass through to the trebles. Um, and it also allows me to kind of just scallop the ends lightly to help tailor it to be a bit more bassy or a bit more trebly in certain areas to help um, tune it to the top itself. The bracing is all very finely carved, so it all reaches a very thin point across the back of the spine of the brace. And this is to reduce as much weight off the brace as possible while keeping the height, which is the, the, the area of it that kind of gives the strength. So any kind of excess bulging or, or rounded edges are just removed because it's, it's not necessary. It's just excess weight. So these are carved to be as straight down the edges as possible to make a real clean peak. And that will help keep the strength of the strut while we take off as much material as possible to keep it light. And then the light of the brace the easier it is to activate the top, so you can play very lightly and get a good volume out of it, as well as playing hard to get the same volume. I then also um, shellac the insides of my guitars. This is to kind of help um, reduce the effects that rapid humidity changes can have on an instrument. Um, so if you're playing in a very humid environment or very dry environment, if it's left there for a long period of time, you notice that the top can either dip or flatten out or even bulge in humid environments and that will throw off your your action and your string height as the, as the bridge will belly up and increase the action or flatten down and then drop the action down so the inside of my guitars are shellacked to help add a buffer so it takes longer for changes to happen obviously if you leave it in the amazon or in the sahara desert um, it's going to have an effect but this is just to help delay that and have it not be so pronounced so quickly. The top brace here, the big tall thick brace to help reinforce this whole area and then these two are locked in um, like a half lap joint into this, this top brace here so this whole area is kept really rigid. And then this top area is left bare so that on the inside here this neck block, I'll try and stitch a few pictures into here um, is two pieces that are dovetailed together um, and that is to try and remove as much of the end grain from being a gluing surface as possible because end grain gluing surfaces usually aren't as strong as uh, long grain being glued. So this two piece neck block is made up so that there's nice long grain where it joins the soundboard face and this also helps it be protruding. Again similar to what a classical guitar would have, they have a long kind of slipper heel. Um, so then that will give a lot of support and reinforcement to the underside of the fingerboard where it goes over the, the soundboard. Again, the inside is shellacked, not only for the humidity thing and keeping it all stable, but it also makes it look just as nice as the outside of the guitar. Um, again, the back struts are all sick of spruce, split, just like in the soundboard. So all my braces are hand split from the logs um, in order to get good straight lengths really on the quarter, the strongest possible way of cutting the, the spruce. And then the sides of the guitar, these little mahogany strips here, they're called twigs. 
and they help reinforce the sides to make them more rigid. So when it comes to building guitars, you want your edges and the sides of the guitar to be really strong and rigid. Um, it helps stop them from muting the sounds. You know, if, if they're very soft and squeaky, then the um, sustain will be dampened um, as the energy gets transferred into the ribs. They don't really complement the sound too strongly um, overall. They're quite low. Um, they don't add a whole lot to the sound of it. So you want to keep them really strong and rigid. That's why you see a lot of companies doing laminate sides um, just to make them rock hard. So this is a way of doing that. So again, these tall mahogany twigs and it also doubles up as a kind of split prevention. So if you ever have a bash or a break, um, if the side is damaged, it will only break to the twig and won't run the whole length of the side and be a much bigger problem to fix. So it's a kind of double-edged fix there. So yeah, mahogany linings throughout, mahogany neck and tail blocks, and spruce struts throughout the whole guitar. And like I said, try and keep the inside looking as clean, as tidy as the outside. It all helps in the grand scheme of things to make it as nice an instrument as possible. So hopefully that will help explain what I do and how I do it. Um, another point with the soundboard, I have all the bracing kind of aimed into the bridge plate. And the idea in my head, whether this is actually um, how it works or not, is that it all kind of acts as if the bridge plate is the center of a kind of speaker cone almost. Um, so that should allow the top to move up and down quite freely in this zone um, while keeping as much strength and stiffness so it doesn't deflect under the strings tension. Um, so a lot of the reviews and kind of comments I've gotten from players is that my guitars are very light. That could be aimed to either the, the fact I use thicker spruce struts throughout and the light carving and then also the oil and wax finish I use keeps it very light and resonant. And the second comment is usually how they have a lot of projection. They're very loud instruments compared to what people are expecting it to be. So I think that kind of helps play a part into the whole, whole mix of things as well. So, I hope that's a nice little breakdown for you. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll try and answer them for you. And this guitar should be coming together quite shortly. So thank you very much.